you mentioned that social imaginary and I, you're talking about modernity and we had Philip Jenkins on after he had written his book, Fertility and Faith. And he said that the more modernity comes into a place, they saw that birth rates went down. It, it's almost as if the, the things that embody make us hu human and have been important historically, family, um, children, those things go down. Whereas the, the preoccupation with fame, uh, notoriety status within a, a secularized world has really, really shifted. And you're right, it's permeated the church. And, and when we when we see that, we we see a lot of different things that are shifting right now. And, and you mentioned also understanding a biblically illiterate. You mentioned that because people are biblically illiterate, even though we have more resources than we've ever had. But you also mentioned culturally illiterate. Elaborate on that for a moment. Help us to see what it, how we have become culturally illiterate. Yeah, may, maybe it's an overstatement, but uh, put it this way. When I first started teaching in seminary, if the word culture was used, like intercultural studies, it was always over there. You know, mm -hmm. Other people had culture. And we weren't really thinking about culture. Now, happily, I think that's all changed. I think people are aware that you know, we in the West, we're a culture too. And, you know, there's a thing called North American culture. I think we're aware of that now, but simply knowing that it's there isn't the same as knowing what it is. Mm. And I think oftentimes it's the artists among us, you know, the poets, the novelists, the painters, they're the ones that are trying to articulate what's actually happening at the moment. And theologians, my kind of people, uh, you know, we are, we're, we're, may, we're maybe slow uh, to understand. And, and, and so what happens is the church has to react to cultural developments that it doesn't fully understand or that it at least have got ahead of it. So uh, I actually taught a course for a number of years at Trinity called Cultural Exegesis, where the whole thrust of the course is you know, trying to help students get develop principles for understanding culture and for being able to read culture the way we read the Word of God. And the, I think the reason it's important is, uh, well, theology is the application of Scripture to all areas of life, and seminaries typically do really well in helping students to learn the biblical languages, you know, to, to exegete the biblical texts, but if you can't relate the Bible to today's world, then that isn't really helpful for the pastor. And so it's that relating to today's world that I mean by cultural understanding. You know, do we understand what's going on? I think a lot of people feel that there are changes happening. They see different things happening, but they don't understand why the changes, what's, what's behind it in who's interested in it, and then what does it mean? Mm. So uh, the course, the course um, that I taught on cultural exegesis, the, the big finish, the research paper, was the students had to choose something in the culture, and then they had to read it or interpret it. And uh, I, I got some fascinating papers from that course, you know, people picking something in the culture that they didn't quite get, and they wanted to, to go deeper and understand it, and so I, I have very pleasant memories of Christmas holidays uh, surrounded not by gifts, but by student term papers, <laughs> you know, on these, uh, <laughs> sometimes they'd choose a film, sometimes they'd choose a musician, you know, and I, I learned a lot by, by reading these student papers. And uh, it got to the point that I started sharing some of the best papers with other family members. So I have members, I have memories of Christmas where we're all sitting around the tree reading Trinity Divinity School papers. <laughs> yeah. I, I I'm laughing because I was in that course. <laughs> hey. I don't think my paper was being passed around, but that's, well, that's okay. You never know. You never know. Uh, I, I do want to say, I, I, maybe you know this, Travis, but um, at one point, I actually pitched the idea to a publisher that they should publish, you know, mm -hmm. some of the papers from this class. The publishers were pretty skeptical, to say the least, <laughs> but they actually did it. There's a book out there called Everyday Theology, Theology How to Read Cultural Texts 
and interpret trends. And uh, it's out there. It's actually sold much better than the publishers thought. Uh, maybe it's a little dated now because the things in culture we were looking at are maybe 15 years old now, 10 to 15 years old. But still, I think it's it was a it was a helpful workbook, you know, a series of exercises in how to make sense of of what's happening all around us in biblical and theological terms.